Beautiful people, more life, more blessings. You know the vibes. We outside as usual. Do it for the love. Episode 18, for the love of freestyling. You know me, your host, Eric Buddy Davis. Yeah. Who in the building with me? Spitfire. And as usual, you know we're feeling good, feeling great. Feeling great, feeling good. And we hope you are too. Talk. So as I already said, tonight is for the love of freestyling, but we're not going to do too much different than what we usually do. We're just going to be a little bit more loose of what our topics and our conversation. So as usual, my brother, what's that temperature feeling like? Temperature good. And you know I always like to bring that up and talk about weather. Okay. And I should have came in with the short sleeves like you did because it's starting to feel a little warm outside. The weather be free. As, as, our, as our producer told us, you know, it's, it, the, the weather be playing tricks on us. So you can't trust it all the time. That's right? a fact. So I'm just wearing this this nice sweater to make sure I don't catch a cold because it feel a little bit good outside, but you got to be aware. It's you know, tricky. We could be, I seen snow hit Cali. Word? Yes. Eight feet of snow. Oh, Lord. Southern? Northern? What's that? I think it was close to Sacramento. So whatever okay. part that Sacramento, is. I think, is a little bit more. But just, just think about that. We in March, bro. Mm -hmm. And they got hit with snow. Eight We're, feet of that. World's changing. And we struggling to get snow out here in Maryland. So it's like, man, you got to be... This temperature shit is crazy. That's all I'm saying. How you touch? The man told you the world's temperature. <laughs> I don't know how he feel. But that's my brother. Um, I feel good, bro. Um, I'm coming off having Donnie. For a week. For those who don't know, Donnie is my son. Donovan, D Man's pop, D Man, all of that. That's my boy. Um, he don't give you a pound, he don't rock with you. At all. Uh, <laughs> but if you don't know, when I got Donovan in town, that means no sleep for me. So I'm low key, I'm low key saying like MJ playing through the flu game, you know, lack of sleep, but I'm still trying 45 on y'all because that's what I do. Show up when it's game time. But I feel good, bro. Blessed anytime I'm with my boys, love. Um, the, the fucking years moving. At a fast pace, we already in month three. So um, I feel good, bro. I feel good about where we at. I feel good about everything that's just happened, everything that we've just experienced. We we blessed, bro. Mm -hmm. So um, my temperature's blessed. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a temperature, yeah. but my temperature's blessed today, for sure. You gotta give us that uh, by the book definition of freestyle, so we can really break it down. Let's get into it. Yeah. So for those who are watching for the first time, I like to give you the Google definition of what the topic is. And then we go into how we feel about it, what that word means to you. How do you feel when you hear the word of the night, which is freestyle? Mm -hmm. So, freestyle, denoting a contest or version of a sport in which there are few restrictions on the moves or techniques that competitors employ. Another definition, a contest in which there are few restrictions, in particular, a swimming race in which competitors may use any stroke Big pause on whoever wrote that second definition of freestyling on Google. Um, but for me, when I think freestyling, so... I don't think about neither one of them definitions. Right. Yeah, it might be the same as mine. I think battle rap, baby. Yeah. I think the essence of hip-hop. I think competitiveness. Sure. I think... Um, I'm not going to lie. The first definition kind of got me because it made me think of breakdancing. In the early stages of hip hop, and when they would call, you know, the B-boys get on the floor, get on the uh, get on the cardboard box, and they do their thing. When you battle and stuff, you might got some set rounds, but when you get to that last round, it's the freestyle round. Who's really the most creative and who the best dancer? So um, those are a few of the things I think when I think freestyling. So let's talk freestyle. For sure. When I think about freestyling, I think about the same thing. Freestyle battling as an ex rapper. That's how we got into it. I literally can remember the story of how I got into rapping, just chilling with Trey, Trey the Kid, and my cousin Millie, and I weird Trey, Trey House. His father was an ex-DJ, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So he had all the equipment, and he always used to tell Trey, do not touch my equipment. But when he was out of there, yo, we was in the room. All over the equipment. First, the first time being there, I remember Trey setting it up, pulling the microphone out, throwing a beat on, and him and my cousin Millie going in. I mean, they sound dope, though, like for us being 13 and 12 at the time right. and me at the time I didn't rap like I sounded like trash So to see them like literally go off the top of their head and it'd be some dope shit at that age Like it inspired me to start and even though I was some shit I still did it and I tried right. just for the fun of it and uh, Look where it put me in a serious rapper to take it serious so freestyling was just always naturally a part of our crew coming up You know what I mean? Gotcha. But another part of freestyling that I think about is improv like, mm. one of the shows that I love the most is, uh, I can't remember the name and I feel bad, but one, Wayne Brady and his crew. Whose like, name is it anyway? Whose name is it? I think, or what name is it? Something like that. Right. But that show is so dope because 
you know, it's all different types of comedy. You got stand up, you got theater, and improv is so dope because it's off the top of the head. And it's not been one episode that I watched where I was like, they ain't hit the mark on this one. It's always being on your toes, being ready. And like we doing now, it's like, you know what I'm saying? We came on this with that topic. I'm like, let's not do any paper. Let's just go straight off the top to really show that this ain't no bullshit for us. And we've nice. actually gifted it, just give me all that gift of gag. So, the wallet, then you know, that's not to get too long-winded, but I really have a true love and respect for freestyling because when it's needed, it's needed. And uh, that shit goes down in business too. I done been on some serious like missions as far as setting a goal, setting up a presentation, and something going wrong at the last minute. Right. And you gotta freestyle it. Like whether that's coming in the room with confidence, in your pitch or doing a part of it that you may miss or you left at home like you got to freestyle through it and uh just make sure it's right though freestyle comes with huge confidence Straight up. um it's crazy because i said battle rapping when i thought freestyling but really it's more big ticket mm -hmm. the basement yeah. back when it was like actually an art form to just come off the top nothing on paper i understand when certain artists at a certain stature like a j or 50 they will come in there and spit a verse that might be like off the album or a single which i feel like has turned into everybody doing that now they just spit verses that ain't came out yet or something old that may never came out but they wrote it down for like a quick moment like the radio freestyle people used to purposely write the freestyle for the radio so it's still a freestyle because he wasn't writing it in song structure yeah. but um Whose line is it anyway? Is the name of the song. Wi Fi popping, by the way. Um, so we're going to update everything. If we say something wrong, I'm on, I'm on the search for it today. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where my mind goes when I think freestyling. I just think the art of being on your toes. Yeah. Like coming up quick. To me, the, by the way, I got to say this. Only a few people may know. Michael Stanford's one of them, a few other people. I was the best freestyler in Annapolis at a point in time. You? No, yeah, me. Nobody ever really heard it. But like the people that was around me, but bruh. That's, hey, a, that's a bold claim for only one, hey, one person to know that. Listen, Mike, I need you vouch for me. <laughs> and Aaron, anybody else that uh, heard me freestyle just about, we would be in the car, big sessions back when it wasn't legal, and we would just be anywhere, hanging out, doing what we do. You already know. I used to get it in, bro. Any beat, any yeah. pace, any tempo, any slack. So, yeah, but to get back and away from me, I just had to let that out there because we were talking about the freestyle back in the day. Um, I just really think about the people that are creative enough to just go. To me, I look at you as a freestyler. I know a lot of the murals are already done and you go into it sometimes, you know, you freehand and sometimes it's more structured. Yeah. But that still takes a bit of creativity. Sometimes you gotta go in the flow. What if you run out of a paint coat? What if you gotta do something? To me, all that is, uh, you know, a type of freestyling. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what tonight's episode we want to feel like. We want it to feel like we just giving you what's on our mind. We're gonna go over training topics. We're going to go over certain things. We didn't write a lot down. We do got some stuff written down just to make it flow. But for the most part, we just giving y'all what we feel. This is doing for the love. And we love our people. We love our audience. We love our show. So we're here for y'all tonight. And speaking of loving our show, we're going to give y'all that recap of this season one and how it's been impactful to not only us, but the community. Facts. And impactful for some of the guests that's been on. I, just seen, I, I don't want to say we like propelled anybody or made them famous, right. but it's been... Great to give people another platform to give people a more in-depth story about who they is. Right. And then to see what they do after they leave the show and continuing to be successful is just dope. Right. It's like we're building a brotherhood, a sisterhood, when our women, everybody that come through our show. You're now part of the Do It For The Love family. You go into, I know a lot of people be like, oh man, y'all know what's wrong. We got to fill out a form. Yes, because the structure is everything. And on top of that, we want to have a list of anybody that's touched this platform, anybody that's set in the middle between us, we want those people to be highlighted and remember forever because we're going to recap everything as we go. We're looking for 100 episodes, 200 episodes. We don't plan on stopping in this episode 18 for the love of freestyle. And so this one is for y'all, mm -hmm. purposely. Sure. So, sponsor highlight tonight. The sponsor highlight for this episode, episode 18, is Do It For The Love. <laughs> Do It For The Love podcast collaborating with Atelier Baltimore Studios sure. because that's what brings this entire idea to life. This was once just a thought. This was a freestyle. Mm -hmm. This is something that me and Sal both out the game for a little minute was saying, yo, we gotta get back into this lane. We right. gotta get back, we gotta get back into our people. We gotta get back into the field of communicating. Yeah. In a sense of not just through our work, but through our voices, through our time, through our energy, and our passion. So um, we highlight that tonight. What you wanna say about us? I wanna say that, uh it's been great to just see that we have 
followers and subscribers, which y'all should do right now. So if you're hearing this or watching this, because that's important for us. So subscribe. But it's been great to see people like, whether it's a new person or somebody that we know personally, be like, yo, I've been waiting for this new episode, or I watch it every week. And the people that's been giving us helpful tips about the show. So um, we appreciate everybody that's like investing into it, whether it's just through your opinion, because that matters. And uh, we take it that serious. Like we trying to search out a lot of talent throughout the DMV. And it's been great also to have people recommend talent to us. So if you checked out the website already, do it for the love.com. You can always click that button and fill out a form and uh, see if we can get you up here. But as of now, we got a list. So that's dope to show the interest not only in people watching the show, but people that want to be a part of the show. And not, you know, just people starting up. Everybody that's reached out is like seasoned in what they do. So right. that shows a respect in what we do for us to be newcomers in the podcasting game. Um, I'm just real blessed and proud of us, bro, because everything we envision is coming to life and more. We got some big events coming up where we've been blessed to, where people reached out to us and want us to be a part of the media team that comes and covers the event. So that shows our expertise as absolutely, well. So absolutely. I'm just proud of us, man. Yeah, man. It's like looking at where we at and how far to me we can go. It's it's a blessing. Um, mm -hmm. Everything that we do, every episode that we show up, every topic. I see people at gas stations, bro. I watch the show, man. Y'all, yo, y'all got something great. Don't stop. Yeah. When I'm with my mom and people in grocery stores at the store, oh man, I watch the show, man. It's really, really good. Yeah. I hope to uh, get somebody that I know on there, man. I gotta send you some recommendations. Yeah. Like people are tapped in and they actually are learning from our guests. I get people at work that was like, man, listen, that dear no leader store, yeah. bro. I gotta get the book. Yeah. I get people that see me and says, oh man, like. I don't want to go see Comedian Fred. Like, I, I want to go check out his show. He seemed like a vibrant dude. It's like a lot of people are into the different type of guests, and I love the variety that we've had lately from nourishment to, which y'all haven't seen yet, but it's coming to you soon, just different type of people that do TED Talks, people that uh, have their own lives, people that have created other nonprofits besides the ones that we've had on already. It's just beautiful um, what we're growing in. So continue to send those forms in. Even though we got a list, don't be discouraged. We need you, we want you, we not stopping, so neither should you. Uh, we're gonna keep on giving you this good love, because mm -hmm. we're coming at you full, full flash with the love. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a blessing to be here with you, bro, because one thing we can't not mention is each other. Yeah. Um, this doesn't happen without you, your creative skills, and you just moving on. This man does not fucking stop. <laughs> He's all night long with it. Yo, bro, I was up last night, I watched five podcasts, I created a new design, and um, we should try this. Like he's always innovating and doing something different. And me, I'm normally, I go with the flow. And when I got something to come up with, he listens to me. He takes it and we go with it. So uh, I'm appreciative of you, bro. Same here, bro. And I can't take all the credit because, uh, you know, Buddy puts in a lot of work. Most of the time when y'all getting them emails and then y'all seeing those responses coming from Bud, you know what I'm saying? Communicator. So just, just having a person that's, and I mean, we can kind of spin off into why it's important with freestyling that you have somebody to back you up. Yes. Just like in battle rap, right? What makes some of them battles dope? You got that nigga behind you, like, get him, Ooh. get him. And, and you're the perfect wingman to have, you know, because as outside of the podcast, we friends and we yeah. know about each other's real temperatures every day. And, yes. and we don't have the best days sometimes, but one thing, man, buddy always there to support each other, uplift. Buddy always giving me positive messages when shit going crazy. So, you know, it's good to have a true friend and a uh, business partner and a podcast host with me. So like you said, man, shout out to you. We're going to keep grinding. And you're going to see more people uh, be a part of the team. There's somebody behind the camera who always giving us opinions about what looks good, you know, giving us praise and uplifting us, man. So the faceless camera, man. Yes, yeah, it's, it's season one budget, but season two, we hope to add more people on the staff, you know, whether you helping us make some, because we want to get into blogging. We, we feel like outside of just let, because most of the guests that we bring on here, they stories are so dope. You can't cover it in 60 minutes. Yeah, it's a lot. You can't. We missed a lot. Like in the Chef Ants episode, we caught at the tail end of the episode that this man was locked up in federal, pen, federal penitentiary. He said that is smooth. Like, like, I'm like, come you're on. Smooth, you're a smooth man. I already told you. Yeah. You're a dangerous girl. Yeah, man. So, but not it's, more. it's a lot that you can't unpack in six, 60 minutes, and not every guest is going to be able to come back, you know, on season two. We still right. got a long list of people. So, we would love to cover that in a blog. So, if you're a journalist and you feel like you need a good spot to get, 
you're on a platform to expose your talent, we're looking for you. You know what I mean? So come and join the Do It For The Love staff. That part of the family. So moving forward, that's the sponsor highlight for this episode. For all of our viewers, first time listeners, that's what we are going to in the future. Have brands and businesses, two minute commercials, one minute commercials, maybe for a month, maybe for two episodes. That's what would be for you. But moving forward, we're going to do a little different tonight. If you've already watched 17 episodes of us, then you know we do the who, what, when, where, why portion. And tonight, being that we've already done that with each other before on the show, being that the first two episodes was just us, Tonight, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So instead of who with us, let's go who is trending. <laughs> and uh, one of the first things that popped up on my trending list, and this is for the sports world, and we can go on it quickly and keep it moving. Jason Kelsey, mm -hmm. just retired. Travis Kelsey, whole family crying in the front row. It looked beautiful. I haven't had a chance to listen to it. Um, being that we Commanders fans, I'm not going to act like I really kept up with that man's career. Because I haven't. But I will say that what I've seen in the last few years is that Jason Kelsey, from what all the other people say, best center in the league. Um, he's held it down for a long time consistently. I think he's been with Philly his whole career, maybe. Um, so I just want to say congratulations on your retirement, good brother. Best brother in the league? Damn, is it any other brothers in the league? Yeah. Who? I can't think of Oh, the Diggs. You got the Watts. Got, so they from DMV, too. How can I do that? Sorry, Diggs, brothers. Watts brothers. Watts brothers, even though JJ retired. Um, maybe, because they've been in the big show lately. Both Both Kelsey's been in the big show. Both got I think the Kelsey brothers are the brothers of the NFL. The first official brothers of the NFL. That's freestyle so we can't really fact check right, right now, but I definitely, they up there. Because Shannon Sharp brother, I know we just watched that when we seen the highlight. He was talking about how that was his motivation. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that's the perfect alley hoop. And since it said his name, Shannon Sharp. Yes. Also trending mm -hmm. in media this week. Um, Trending for all the wrong reasons. As we know, Shannon Sharp is pretty cut up. He doesn't take a chance not to tell you that he's been cut up his whole life. He was born like that. And sometimes when you get older, that cut up shape does not always form fit in all clothing. And I think that needs to come with a major pause there. What I'm saying? Nothing. It's just, it's too close borderline. Oh, being cut man, up. now we get involved just, just, I'm trying to help him. Alright, go ahead, go ahead. That's go ahead. Cool. He, was, he was cut up since he was young. He, he, he says it himself in men interviews. But either way, <laughs> Shannon uh, got out at some stop. It looked like he might have been going to a family general or something. It looked like a random party. Yeah, I was at Total Wine. Total Wine? Okay. <laughs> he's, he's really going, 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 he was really going to Total Wine. Alright, I saw a comedian spoof it. And he was at Total Wine with the same outfit on doing the poses. Yeah. That shit looked trippy. But, um,. Yeah, everybody's going at Shannon Sharp right now. You know it's already been trending about his stylist. Mm -hmm. uh, people, old comedians, the first thing they've done to go at him since he's been super viral famous since Cat Williams is his manhood. So, how you feel about Shannon, man? How do you feel about the picture first and then just everything else? Well, first, let's get on the, the elephant in the room. Most people right now, because that, that picture video went viral amongst the interview with Cat, because people trying to say he's gay now. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, just straight up, it don't fucking matter, even if he is. But he's been on record to say he's not. He has children to prove that in his past he's been straight. So what he's doing right now, if he comes out like he did and say he's not, then I'm going to take him for his word. Because it don't fucking matter to me. I'm sure. not attracted to Shannon Sharp. So I don't give a fuck about what he is. I don't care what you're doing. The one thing that I did see in the comments from a lot of supporters and regular people is why the fuck are y'all talking about the way he stand when this man that had major hip surgeries and just a fucking football player? And what he, we know, I, to be honest, I was asked about that. Like, do I think he looked like that? And I was like, to be honest, before I even judge him off that, I've never even seen him walk before. <laughs> I don't, even from playing football, I just That's don't true. remember that. Right, right, right. Like, we, I'm we not always seeing him sitting down. Yeah. He's at uh, behind a desk. Right. Or, you know, sitting down. So that was like our first time for me, really right. saying him. Like, but it don't fucking matter. It was a weird stance and it was it was funny to look at, but I think people really like zeroing, too, zeroing in on too much on his sexuality. And I think it's just the, like Cat Williams said, he was going to put him in another stratosphere. And I believe no matter what your profession is, when you reach that stratosphere, the cat was talking neck. about talking on your back, they at your neck, and whatever. Like you just gotta expect whatever. You you know by millions of people, and not everybody likes you. Right. Like so, that, I mean, I could go on. And on yeah, he takes it with grace. So pause. <laughs> now that one was dangerous. But either or, shout out to Shannon Shaw, man. I'm actually a fan of you, brother. I like what you brought to TV, even when it was calling you a coon when you had the cigars and the yak. 
on Fox with Skip. When you first started, you made your personality show. And now that you got your own podcast, still sipping the yak, my brother, don't change for nobody. Keep on uh, glowing in your success and be you, my guy. Because you remember I said on one of the very first episodes, we tend to forget all the time about the past. Let's not forget when he was sitting across Skip Bayless and he used to bring the black and mild. Everybody was like, oh, that's my favorite uncle. Mm-hmm. Don't be mad because we brought on another uncle, Cat Williams. And he had his opinion about people, and this man went viral that everybody just throwing the dart at him. Man, 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 because he's winning. You know how it happens when you win. So, since who, I'm going to keep that people. One more who, unless you have another who. Russell Wilson. Mm. Denver Broncos. Sean Payton. Another thing that just happened to sports today, we all kind of knew it was coming ever since they benched him. What was that, week 16? Maybe something like that. They benched him and he was healthy. Um, Sean Payton got Russell up out of there. They still got to pay that man that bag, though. So, um, I really don't have much thought on it. I hope he lands somewhere where he can finish his career um, gracefully. I don't think, honestly, Russell got much left. He did look way better this year than last year. But um, I just think his glory days are behind him. Um, I think that era is almost pretty much ended. I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to look like coming back. I know he's not going to end on that note. I know he's going to come back. But I think it's dirty how Sean Payton did him. Um, I'm not sure all of the business and how they were with each other in the locker room. But I've never heard anybody really say anything disheartening or negative about Russell Wilson's locker room skills. Actually, last year they was trying to, and his team ain't came in his defense. Yeah. So um, it seems like just a fake media and a fake push. Yeah. So how do you feel about that quickly? Uh, real quick, man. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the Denver Broncos. I'm not a big fan of John Elway. Never been a, never as a player Bronx. and as a, a business owner. He just always looked like a sleazy man in a suit to me. And <laughs> since he's become the GM of Denver, I've never seen anything good come from a black athlete from Denver. And uh, besides my man Jordan no, no boy, I got to shout you out, bro. Super Bowl champion. Um Coming back to even nice and, kind of but again he was one of the people that just proved with his talent. He wasn't a superstar, but he right. made a superstar play. So salute to him. But Denver man, they track record ain't been that well as an organization, and they clearly showing that they picking Sean Payton over him. And uh, Sean Payton doesn't have a clear record for me to believe in him either. Right. And for him to have a nasty ass attitude and say some of the personal shit that he said about Russell on camera and for the Broncos to pick him, I'm making it more about them than I am Russell. But to end it off about Russell, he's had one of the hardest careers as it pertains to uh, people's opinions about him uh, between the Russell Wilson shit between people calling him corny, just randomly getting strays from everywhere, right. you know what I mean? And, and being a Super Bowl champion at that, right? Like, it's just crazy Two that... Two Super Bowls, one more. Yeah, man, it's crazy that uh, people have made so many personal attacks about on him. Because he's a good guy. Yeah, he's really a good guy. Like, so, I wish you the best, bro. I would have loved to have you in Washington. Before you went to Denver, I was rooting that we would have got you. Hey, you might be still in the cards right now. And if I may be speaking this into existence because we is looking for a quarterback, but I think we will make out better using our draft to get our alignment and then making a play for Russell. And whether him and Sam Howell battle it out, right. that's for the, the, the upper brass to decide. Right. But, hey, I respect you, bro. I wish you the best. We spoke on that briefly uh, off camera, several times off camera. And a part of me would love Russell Wilson, and it's a part of me as a Commanders fan that I'm tired of getting niggas at the end of their career. A niggas after they got the bag and they hungry. You think he had the end? I just said that. I kind of. I, I don't know how many more good years Russell Wilson has left in a sense of being the Super Bowl quarterback. I feel like he can definitely. He's better than a game manager, so I do believe he can. But I just. Uh, I don't know. The same people, the same nigga I was just talking shit about, John Elway. Right. They said the same things about him at the end of his career. That's true. That's what I'm talking to take the dog like that on your back to really get you out there. And I would take that chance for him because, again, whether it don't work this year, I don't look at the commanders like they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. We just need to make it to the playoffs and make a statement that we back. So if we get Russell and we get all of these other pieces around him, yes, we could like make it to the playoffs. I believe that. I just said the Cowboys fan off camera that they said that they would love to have him over there. Bro, I would take them chances. The, the veteran. I didn't argue that. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. Fucking no, DC. You're a lot we got too many bad guys in DC. I know that nigga ain't going to the strip club if he come to DC. He focused. I don't gotta worry about that. And I would love to bring Sierra and her talents out here, bro. He like, should have a point. Let's bro. get him out here. So listen, Russ, if you feel like 
one of us is really recruiting you, the other one is a little skeptical. <laughs> but I do believe that you are a Hall of Fame quarterback, and I do feel like you could be good for our locker room. So if we are on your radar, come on, let us. We know you're getting the bag, so you won't need much of us. This is the perfect city for you, bro. <laughs> this man really just threw the whole Russell. I like hey, Russell. You see this man so need a cut. Hey, no, you know why I said that, right? Yeah. Why? Because you see him? Internet was saying he picked yeah. the Airbnb there to go to DC. Fact. So it's a. Hey, you told me. You told me. It's in his class, man. It's in his class. And I ain't defending him, but Russ, uh, Sean Payton's career record is 169 and 105, which ain't, that's pretty good okay. for NFL. Okay. But we still don't like how you treat Russ, so. Fuck. I don't like how you treat niggas at all. <laughs> It's all on fire. I love it. So, moving from that, we gonna go into what? the what's trending. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything I, I can throw I, off what's on my on my X feed? This is the time that we'll ask our direct our director if you wanna throw something out there and a what's trending or something that you might want to talk about, like what happened. Uh, but this well, is why, normally because we kind of putting him on on the spot. Go ahead and look for one. And while you're looking for one, I got one for you. Yes, I know right. it's gonna be new for you. Okay. Alicia Boinkins. What was you thinking? 22-year-old former coach, assistant coach for the Churchland JV girls basketball team in Portsmouth impersonated a 13-year-old. Put the uniform on, on, strapped up the sneakers, and went out there and ball. One more time. What she do? Assistant coach, 22-year-old, threw on the uniform and the sneaks and went out and impersonated a 13-year-old girl. She probably did 13, too. Uh, <laughs> oh, she don't. She don't. She don't? Oh, that's that clip Not I saw? Dunk. She don't. Oh. She, she went out there and did her thing. <laughs> yeah, I saw a girl dunk on somebody the other day, and I thought that might have been a clip. Um, well, that is wild. Um, yeah. I don't know what she was thinking, um, but at the end of the day, she got buckets. What you think about that period? Like, cause she's not the first coach that I've heard that have like just strapped on either a helmet or threw on a sneaker. It was like, fuck it, I'm going back in the game. I think it's out of control. I think, I mean, you can't get playing as kids. She should be arrested for that? Probably. Probably. That's assault. <laughs> like, bro, if you 22, putting on a fucking helmet with some 13 year olds, or, or basketball. and basketball is not really assault because you can't, you're not physically doing anything. I thought she was making a metaphor. Oh no no no! Cause you said helmet too, like just yeah. other other things you heard. But no, in basketball, I, I, I don't know what the charge would be, but the charge, yeah, you, <laughs> fraud or something. Like you, yo, you're 22, and it could be a great story behind it. They might have only had four people. It could have been senior night. It could be a great great Disney story behind the shit. Yeah. But you still a 22 year old impersonating a 13 year old. I know if your son or daughter was on that 13 year old team. Bro, you gonna feel the way, bro. You gonna feel. You gonna be like, I saw this motherfucker at the bar last weekend. Ain't no way, yo. You gonna feel the way. I'm afraid to throw a personal shot at the people that's doing that. Like, this is why I don't like all coaches, because I feel like a lot of coaches, when it comes to the energy that they put on their players, they be thinking about what happened wrong in their career, and they trying to like push it off in the wrong way. Right. So that's the result of that. Then it just overboils to where they really wish they still played. And these niggas is going to strap up and play against teenagers. No respect for y'all, man. What's going on with I, I it's no way I could feel like a man doing that. Even if niggas get strapped up and go against teenagers? What you mean? If I'm one of them? Nah, I'm just going at you for the oh, bullshit. No. If I was on the borderline, they just getting strapped up and go against teenagers. I'm just saying, I'm on a, if you I was trying not to do it, but we freestyling the night, so we yeah. might be battling each other all fucking night. And that's how we handled it. Yeah. And we not biting Mason Cam, this has been going on forever. But New York niggas, y'all do carry that torch. The what is what it is podcast has a sports talk show. Has brought that to the highlight of everybody. And I think it's good for the culture. It's good for the culture. It's fun, man. What the fuck we saying? Some people need to have better literature. Some people take it too far and get like mad at it, and then some people take it for what it is. It's fun, man. It is what it fucking is. And speaking on what's trending, boxing's trending. And why is boxing trending? Oh. Devin Haney's father. Me and Sal uh, working on today uh, before we decided to say fucking and freestyle. We uh, was watching Devin Haney's father on it is what it is podcast. And he had a lot to say about who he calls the Baltimore Bama, mm -hmm. or Mighty Mouse, a.k.a. the heavyweight champion and the biggest draw in boxing, See, 10 he days. He said plural, though, bro. He didn't say Baltimore Bama. He said them Baltimore Bama. Yeah, he, he called everybody. I, I was trying to keep it personal to take. He said Baltimore Bama. When he said that the city of Baltimore, he wasn't talking about y'all. He just talking about that whole camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like he was making it real personal. Shout out to Trainer saying why he looked like that. Yeah. He said it can't be getting a bag if he dressed like that. Try to say uh, Javon Tank ain't feeding them. Oh man, listen, he was going in, but at the end of the day, he's a great promoter. And he said it several times that his son wants the big fight. He wants the big fish, and everybody knows Tank the big fish. Yeah. So I mean, I think I already know we want that fight, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we want that's that big fight. For the city, that's big for the state. You know. It's uh, big for boxing. Boxing yeah. needed because there's so much fluff in boxing. Look at this shit going on with Ryan Garcia. Uh, you saw Devin Haney's next fight, by the way. TikTok or whatever that was, where this man got people talking about R.I.P. Ryan. Yeah, he's, he made a video about yeah. that too. I seen on the way coming up. I see, I got, he, maybe you could tell me, but before a Buddy tells us what really happened, it looked like his toddler went in his pocket, took his phone, <laughs> and was just went on TikTok and just typing away. That's Bro. how dumb that shit. I didn't, I didn't watch the video, but he's sitting on the couch with a bubble going on, talking comfortably. It looked like Soulja Boy interview, when he's like, pow, 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 yeah. and then three more niggas came inside. So it was like, at the end of the day, I think all of them went on TV and stuff in the last few days to promote their fight. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I, we had a conversation off camera, us and the faceless director back there. I don't think all sports is rigged, <laughs> but I do think they sell the fucking sport. They sell the game. They sell certain stuff. Let's so move into that. They sell them. They sell them the fight. They sell them all their fights to be quite honest. We're gonna, we're gonna talk strictly about that fight, but I love that topic about sports being rigged and all of that. But in okay, so that'll be a why. Yeah. Why do you think sports is rigged? Because I was gonna go, why is this trending? But that I can go. I, I can pivot there. I got a why. It's not why do I think sports is fake. It's why do I think boxing is starting to become bullshit. It's because. We don't know whether we have a good fight or not. We have to base it on this excitement and these fake stories and this fake animosity. And and I don't like it because they be in new press conferences and they'll have their crowd, somebody in the crowd involved now, somebody on the uncle cussing and all of this. And now you got like Bud Crawford telling the lady in the crowd, shut the fuck up. Like, right. it's just crazy, bro. Boxing is becoming too theatrical and it yeah. make you think it's like wrestling. I think all of it, to a sense, is similar, but I feel like, that's the thing, I feel like some things you cannot script, mm -hmm. and then some shit you can definitely line it up and be like, well, let's put them in scenarios, because I know one of these three things are happening. Mm -hmm. So I can go with it to a certain extent. It's definitely getting like wrestling, because they got to sell a fight. We was talking about this off camera earlier, about wrestling being a little bit more strenuous, because it's weekly. Um, they go on their tours, they're always doing it with boxing. We haven't seen Bud Crawford in the ring in over a year and a half. And that's why people say that he beat Spence. Because Spence ain't fighting a year and a half where Bud was in the ring two years back to back. So when you get to that level of boxing, I just think y'all need to stay more active. One thing, you can say whatever the fuck you want about Floyd and ducking people. That man was active. A fight a year, if not two. His whole career. Whole career. Even when it got to the end of Manny Pacquiao and them, he was still fighting once a year. These young boys, yo, they fighting every two years. It's ridiculous. And I'm not even the type, like we said, this is doing for the love. So I don't want anybody to feel like this is an episode where we spewing hate. Because we all know that y'all go hard on the night. It's the facts. But it's for the love, though. It's out of the love. Out of the love. It's the same shit they saying in barbershops, man. I ain't. I just had to let them know we're still here for the love. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you guys had to let them know. Because I know you'll check with this quick. <laughs> I got to let them know that I am here for the love always. But at the same time, we are holding people accountable. I've been calling this the 2024 year, year the mama. So it's only right if we stay consistent with that energy. And that's how we felt about the boxing thing. Did you have anything more that you want to um, speak on that topic? Before now, we go to the last life? thing that I was going to say about boxing and it being theatrical is it reminded me of like almost uh, love and hip hop. Like, because <laughs> the boxers, like, you see them out, they might see each other at a fucking strip club and now they making sign wars like niggas in the hood like over by and but not giving each other a fight it's like pick me pick me right. fight me fight me instead of it being like it was back in the day a simple handshake thank you and for a conversation idea. you know what i'm saying facts it's, it's it's crazy but are we still on the topic of just sports being fake um well i was gonna pivot that you gave me a oop unless oh, you yeah. got one no, no i was no. gonna pivot that why because we're doing our who what when why we're a little different and i was gonna pivot that why into at first, I was going to say, like, why is this trending? But I got a better one for me, I think. I think. Why do we let politics fool us mm. every time it's election time? Uh, four years, I man. think I got a feeling about what you're about to say. Um, well, I wasn't going to say anything more specific besides the fact that the reason I said you gave me a oop, the way you just talked about boxing. It's like, man, these motherfuckers party together. Bro, that's how I look at politics. Republicans and Democrats are friends. Mm. They are teammates. They all working. To get us worked up 
for them to work out and win. And the crazy shit, they, <laughs> and just because he said they work together, they don't even like each other. No, we don't have to like them. They have the common decency to work together and agree to disagree if they don't. Democracy. Yeah. And I, you wanna, and I am not even political. So I try, if you notice 18 episodes in, we haven't gone heavy on politics. I try to stay away from it. Because it's not something that I really care that much about, even though I know the older blacks hate when I say that, because we fought so much to have a voice. But I don't, it's hard for me to get into stuff that I know is rigged. Mm -hmm. Like, I would probably stop loving sports if it really was exposed that something I love my whole life for the competitive edge of it is faking. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew wrestling always was like, you know these grown ass men ain't really like wearing spandex all the time and like you know I knew like a part of it wasn't real but I did believe it at a certain point in my life but I like knew got to a certain age I'm like alright and now like, I'm like respected them that all the documentaries is out they I like how they freestyle it was always secret to not say anything about what they really do being friends or hurting and all of that and I think Shawn Michaels or somebody broke that and what I loved about it is Vince McMahon and them was smart enough to freestyle and pivot and be like fuck it Documentary, documentaries and everything about what wrestling really is. All the work that goes into it. All the hard work that we doing behind the scenes of writing these scripts, of making these characters, all the different shit that they got to go through to get on the stage. Yeah. So it's like, sometimes being exposed brings the best out of you. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it kills you, like yeah. literally. So um, that's how I look at the politics, bro. They really be having us beefing with each other, like going at it on social media. Oh, you ain't black. And, like, yo, look, both sides, Democrats and Republicans, have made statements about if you ain't black and you do this. White men. Mm -hmm. bro. And I ain't even the type of person that care about shit like that. Look how wild that really it's is. It's just crazy that we so deep after segregation and all of this and black people don't have their own party. That's the, that's the fucking sorry part. And the other crazy part about it is that we more worried about sports being rigged when we know the election is shit. Not that the election is rigged, because I'm not one of them fucking Trump believers who thought that the fucking votes was rigged. We just talking about shit being rigged from it looking like fake controversy when they really be knowing about what the policies and shit they want. Or what I thought she was going to say is shit like Kamala Harris inviting all of these sorority chicks out today or yesterday okay, and then playing this. sexy red oh yeah sexy at the, red. got the dj bumping sexy red big sexy in the she vice president's it. house she like, stayed with her. but but just think about like i'm i'm the all for says. the culture coming but right. come on bro i get it i get just so much i would have if she could play bob molly in that motherfucker that would have been better at least the music fits the shit that we fighting for you know what i'm saying but right. you're playing ski yeet in the fucking in your house, like that's crazy. And then amongst, and then what made it worse? Of course, we in there dancing and like, but it had to be wild for somebody to fucking go on their phone and be like, look what they playing in here, like. But again, that's falling for the okie doke, like Buddy started with earlier. Like, I, it's just crazy. Kamala Harris, even though I'm gonna get political, like, fuck, it. I don't respect her, like, and I, I started out giving her a chance, but she don't speak out when it's needed. And she always pussyfoots around different subjects and then do shit like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just don't respect it. And I hope that all our people watching, we have to vote regardless of what we think. Do your own research on your own time about these candidates before you hit that poll station. Like, for real. Facts. Make, make your vote count in a good way. Because they, they bamboozled us a lot with the whole Biden shit. Right. Like, um, not that it was anybody better. Yeah, I feel like a lot of this stuff, even in politics, like, I, like part of me look at the Kamala Harris thing, because I didn't see it, but the thought of it just made me feel like how uh, certain blacks would make jokes like, well, we went to the White House with Obama, and then certain parties and clips we would see, it wasn't nothing, it would always look like class with Obama. Mm -hmm. And even though Kamala went to HBCU and all that, she has bad stuff in her reputation. And you know, like the super pro black people that even though she has a white husband, there's a lot of things people don't like about her in the community. So, um, and I always feel like vice presidents, for like I said, not a pop, political person, but I always feel like vice presidents don't say or do shit. But I don't know their real job titles and duties. Like, I don't know. That's the part of their job. To not do shit? Yeah. No, not to not do it. It's just not, they're not the face of everything. Because when... Who was the vice president for when Trump was in office? Um, his name was... Oh, exactly, was... exactly. That's, oh, that's, that's No, you just... That was my point. That They're just there for a job to that's sit in the seat. You yeah. know, some, some president's wife don't do anything. But some president's wife do do stuff. Mm -hmm. So everybody's different. If I'm not mistaken about 
uh, Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. She was she was real locked into hip hop. I don't know if y'all know that she was she was in she that's, was she was in with us back then. But see, and that's that's the thing. I be feeling like people stray away from who they really are or right. what could really impact the culture. Because if you really into hip hop and you know what's up, right. Like, start talking to all people like, you know what's up. Like but she has done certain stuff. Like, I know she had Dave Chappelle and a few, I think, The Roots and other people come to the White House. Like, she's had her moments, but I get what you're saying. We would love to see more of it. Yeah, especially entertainment. Especially when, you, you, when I know you hear everybody not fucking believing in Joe and thinking he old and but thinking he this. It's, it's she really can. Too. It's scripted. Like, she used to date Montel Williams. I don't I know, know that. that. I remember that. But she... When you get that 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 power, right. ain't nothing you can do. Right. Not that it's I basically just working. It happened, but I remember people. I was like, you bringing that up? Once I was still living. Yes. All right, I was just checking. Oh I wasn't trying to kill him. I just ain't heard his name in the world. Is that, is that what a what? Let's get to where. Where is Montel Williams? Let's check. <laughs> Yo, <Yeah. laughs> oh. Montel Williams. And and while Buddy's looking that up, because we could talk about the shows like. What's up with uh, talk shows now? You know, I, I, I miss. We came up in a golden era. There you go. Rick I'm Lake. Answer. Rick Lake. What? What? Martel Williams. Okay. Host Military Makeover Operation Career on Lifetime. So there goes your game oh, show. You gotta watch Lifetime. Okay. Like Ten minutes. I don't even know about how the military making over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back to talk shows. I was just watching that the other day. It was the uh, the lady from off of Cosby Show. Um, what's her name? Which one? The third daughter. Yeah. Uh, Vanessa. Vanessa. Yeah, I forgot her real life name. Tempest. Tempest Blesso. She had her show back in the day. Do y'all remember that? Where's she at? I don't know. What's going on with... Oh, Comebacks. Different World is doing a, a college tour. I saw that. I saw it. That's dope. That. that was dope. Shout out to Different World. I can speak a little bit on that. I, I remember... I didn't watch it. But wow. Because I felt like... when I remember seeing it on TV. My cousin was a big... Shout out to my cousin Ted. At the time, she was in high school. I was still young. I was all on wrestling. You know, the shit we talked about earlier. But I can remember catching glimpses of a different world. And then looking back at it as I got older, I love how they kept HBCU culture and rich in their show. Mm -hmm. They really talked about real things. It was, and then at the time of the Teen Summit on BET, they still kind of like meshed together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. they got that same vibe. So I miss shows like that. And yeah. a lot of the shows that we see now is just so disconnected from real life. Yes. But it's connected to the social world, which we also consume with. So I'm not mad at producers. I get y'all making the money, but it's really nothing rich about a lot of the shows we watch now. Yeah. No, it's, it's a fact. Um, I grew up with a sister 10 years older than me. So, like, I was watching all the old TV shows. So, yeah. like, that's one thing I, anytime we brought up Bill Cosby, it's like, yeah, the man did what he did. But at the same time, nobody allegedly. created. Allegedly. Allegedly did what he did. But um, nobody created a show or a template that made kids want to go to HBCUs. And mm -hmm. you saw a family, mm -hmm. not just no family doing anything, doctors, husband and wife. With kids, so you know, in a brownstone, like, what the fuck do you see stuff like that growing up in a black house, in a black neighborhood or black household? So you can never knock the hustle of what somebody created to inspire. So, um, Timson, Tim, ah, Timson, 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 I think it's her name is actually spelled so interesting. T E M P E S T T. How do you pronounce that? Tempest. Tempest Bledsoe. She's married to Ron. From a different world. Yes. Okay. So um, I think she's just acting. She looks. She actually looks good. Yeah. Still tough today. I know she'll. Um, I know. I seen her on something because they were talking about doing something about the Cosby kids. But I know it's kind of still like you know murky. I'm just just dealing with the name. So yeah. Um, yeah shout out to all of the people from because a lot of them are still living. A lot of the shows we grew up on. Mm -hmm. So um, what well, we didn't grow up on, but the stuff that's our culture, not era. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Faces producer grew up on yeah, all the shows, up. but because uh, I was actually going to go to college. Until because I, of that? And I found out that Hillman wasn't a real college. It was like See, the mix the of Howard and Hampton mixed together. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. College life looked different now, man, than when we went. Everything looks different now. Honestly, bro. Exactly. I feel encouraged if you're young and you're watching and you, you're about to make that. that yeah, go choice. network, please. Get out of get out of this so norm. The beautiful thing mm -hmm. about it, I think that's still going to always be in college life, regardless of it, is the networking, the meeting the people, the experiencing life outside of your city. Like, I spent four years in Atlanta. Um, every year I was in a different part of Atlanta, and I promise you, like, it made me 
more of a man that I am today than my own sitting dead. You know, yeah. for real. Like it just put me through experiences, put me around the right people that uh, really made me a man and made me look at the world from a different point. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them people that I met at that time, they either went back to their cities or ventured off to other states and I still got connections with them. And I'm still able to visit and if I happen to be doing a mural in that city, I could pull up, which a lot of my friends are artists, but they might pull up and, and help me paint. So those connections and the relationships that we had from college right. have grew on to become great things. Like I'm, you know, was the best man in one of my friends' wedding. At the, yeah, the wedding. Uh, saw the birth of his son, which I'm the godfather. It's just big things right. that, you know, you wouldn't expect that you would or suspect to do if you leave the state. You, you know? got, I'm not gonna say you have to go to school, but you have to get exposure. And if you don't have a plan at the high school, I know we are freestyling the night, so I'm gonna freestyle real quick. This is a hidden gem for anybody watching, especially people that wanna go to college. As soon as you can, really start thinking about what you wanna do. Cause then you can use that to travel in school. You can use that to get jobs in school. You can use that to pretty much pivot your entire life into what you want to do next. And more than likely, you'll probably meet the love of your life along the way, best friends along the way. I got connections in Florida, California, New York, all because I went to a small town college in West Virginia. Scared as shit at 17 years old. My why then was because they offered a scholarship and my mother wanted me to go. My why now, as a person, this is the gym because it gave me an opportunity to learn something new. All I knew was Annapolis, Maryland. Up until that point, went on a few trips, Disney World, shit with the family, but I was still with the family. I got a question for you. Yeah. What was your biggest worry before getting to college? Like, like about, like after I chose where I was going this period. Like just when you, a week before you ready, like officially yeah. take your shit and go, what was that worry that you um, had? Just that I would feel comfortable and like it would be like a place where people fuck with me. Yeah. Cause you know me coming from a nab is somebody, nigga. Like everybody fuck with me, my family from here. So it's like when you come from a town like Annapolis, I'm going for one, I was scared a little bit because we went out there a month and a half before everybody else because I played football. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there and we was a division two school that was getting a lot of transfers. So it ain't just like 18 year olds, 19 year olds, and I'm out there with 23 year olds, 24 year olds, grown ass men. And I'm 17, late birthday. I can't even get into the 18-year-old clubs they're going to when we there early. So I'm really alone until I meet, you know, it don't take me long. I met somebody from Maryland, yeah. also there, play football, and I met my crew. Mm -hmm. But um, my biggest fear was just fitting in and being comfortable. Yeah. Because at that point in my life, I never was tested to have to do it. Like, I just did it at St. Mary's, black, at a predominantly white school, smooth. Easy. I was doing that since fifth grade, though, for third grade, it was Sunday school. So that was my biggest fear. Then it was just West Virginia. It was just so fucking unknown to me, bro. Yeah. I thought the same question back at you. My biggest worry before going to college was if one, and I think a lot of kids think this, and this is why they don't choose to go to school, if the work was going to be hard. Uh, sure. You know? That no, sounds so no simple, but really, yeah. No kid really likes to do work. So when you got somebody fucking encouraging them to go to school and they're like, damn, it's more work, and then it's probably going to be hard. I can't speak for all majors, but for what I went to school for, graphic design, it was another challenge after 12th grade, but it wasn't as hard as I expected. Like anything that was work related to my profession, which I went to school for, it was easy because I lived that shit even before getting there. I went in there with a lot of the expertise already. Um, I felt like I didn't really learn more about design and I, I learned more about how to concept the design, how to do more of the uh, brand research and shit sure. about the shit that you're supposed to research before you come up with a logo, or before you pick your colors and all of those cool things. But for the most part, it was the math wasn't more harder than the math I did in 12th grade. And another worry that I had because I moved out of state was getting lost. It's like, mm -hmm. this ain't, we ain't had GPS on our cell phones at that time. And right. it's crazy that I look back on it now. I was wild, bro. Like making money was a part of my thought process, but it wasn't, I didn't go there to get rich. I just wanted to make sure I had to kept the lights on over my head. I graduated and just normal shit. Like the money part of it didn't really hit me until after. It was like once I graduated, I'm like, all right, what, what's, I'm, where am I gonna get this profession at? You right. know, and I the bag. Back. Yeah, so and college as, is dope for real. As an entrepreneur, I went into like corporate America, working for the man mm -hmm. for a lot mm -hmm. of years. And what I decided to do was, I'm tired of making the money, and I got my own skills. I learned from working corporate America, the Hilton, this big, big high end hotels, and luxury this and luxury that. So that's how I turned all that into what I do now. Mm -hmm. The same business frame that they use, I use it as I was actually working and doing all the work for them. Mm -hmm. So now that's, you don't have to go to college, but if you do go to college, then 
do your best, but a lot of times people that go to college still become entrepreneurs. Yeah, facts. you know, still having that business, that business vibe and mindset goes along with that. Yeah. That's another great hidden gem. Um, please take that. Anybody listening to that, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old high schoolers, if you're not going to go to college, hit the library, find your passion, find your drive. Because you don't have to go on people money. It's a lot of different scholarships and all that. We ain't going to get into all of that. Just do your due diligence of yourself. If you check self, then you'll know what you're into. Because what he said is actually a perfect point. If you know the game, you can go learn the game, making money. You don't got to go read no books or do none of that. It's good to go learn the business, but you can learn the business in so many different ways. So just know exactly what you want out of yourself. Don't waste your early teen years. I know I was just going with the flow, trying to have fun. I would have redid college different, but I have no regrets. I'm, I'm, not supposed to be. I'm not encouraging any child to go to graphic school like I did. Not mm -hmm. because there's anything wrong with it, but right. in today's age, mm -hmm. there's so many ways to learn art and the process of doing we got youtube bro like yeah. if we had YouTube Change the game. before mm -hmm. i went to college not saying that i wouldn't have went but shit, i would have learned a lot more in college from having youtube to assist me like Change the game. yeah man and being an artist one good thing about the, being an artist it's in your vision so a lot of times people come to me like oh what you think about this picture or what you think about this i can't judge it because that's the artist the artist created that and mm -hmm. I don't, Go ahead. now I ain't know if it's a sign of the times, but it was like simple things that I didn't have resources to back then. Like being a uh, student that went for graphic design, to graduate, we had to print our designs out on per portfolio paper. Okay. And I remember prints back then costing like five to $10. I'm talking about per piece of paper. And as a student who I just told you, wasn't really worried about my how much money I was making. Right. Didn't have a lot of money to do no extra prints. But now in today's time, you there's so many different places you can get shit printed from. The prices are super low. Was so I don't know if it was the time or the time. Was these companies always around or is it just the boom of the internet that- They was growing, yeah. they was growing. It was, less, it was way less access in things available we were going mm -hmm. like that's what same thing we just said about DTLR off camera like DTLR wasn't at the level of their promotion and that visual and all of that yeah. in 2011 and mm -hmm. 20 not in 2009 2010 when I was working with them and seeing where they at now I wish they had that then but that's why we have in this moment like this and that's why we're giving these gems because things are gonna grow and you could be ahead of the curve or you could be within the curve but either way just know where you fit in and what the fuck you trying to get out of it and you'll be successful yeah. it's, especially in this day and age there's really no excuses yeah. none at all um, we can go. We can keep going in the winter wear. Do you want to go rapid fire? On? How y'all you feel? We got the rapid fire. I wanted to do a, a shine a light. All right, who was shining a light on that? DTLR. Oh wow! Was that on? Did I throw the Uber on purpose? You forgot? No, I, I, didn't. I, actually, oh. I actually knew, okay. but I didn't know. We freestyled so much tonight. I was like, "What yeah. we gonna do? Is we going with the flow?" Yeah, I had told Buddy about this off the camera earlier, so I didn't know if you remember. But I definitely wanted to shine a spotlight on DTLR because. Uh, I was first introduced into D to DTLR right around the time uh, before we graduated high school, like around 2003, 2004, and uh, the shit just got crazy because I remember them supporting the rap career. Okay. You know what I mean? They uh, not the my, not literally support my rap career, but when at the time when I was rapping, the artist who was coming out first, he needed. DTLR to help promote. Okay. And they was on board. I got to see that that was owned by black people, and it was really like from the grassroots growing up, you know what I mean? Coming up as a, a business in, from Baltimore, correct? Right. Yeah, DJ yeah, Law. Yeah, yeah, so it's a Baltimore bread company. And I believe that recently it was acquired by JD Sports in uh, 2021 or 2023. So they have new ownership, but even to get to the point to be able to sell it and to see now that it's still pushing towards the culture, D DTLR is one of the headline sponsors for you know, our, our celebrity event that we just had. You know nice. what I'm saying? They've always supported us. They supported a mural that I've done. I had the DTLR logo on it. So I just wanted to highlight them for always supporting the black culture through hip hop, through sports, and just always riding for us and still continuing to push the needle forward and being innovative in their approach to business. And then with my college job, man, when I went to Towson having a young son, DTLR worked with me. I worked in Annapolis, DTLR, worked in the Towson, DTLR. So shout out to everybody that I met through that brand, through that organization. Some of the funnest times, I'm not gonna lie. It's like your funnest jobs, the jobs that ain't making that much money, but you with people you enjoy, yeah. you're spending the time that you enjoy, and you know, you're fashioning your lifestyle. I yeah. love sneakers, I love shopping. Yeah. So I was right in the midst, and I learned a lot doing that job. It was actually my first man, uh, managerial job. 
So um, shout out to DTLR, your fashion, your lifestyle forever. Keep rocking, keep winning. Yeah. Um, so. And dare to live right, this thing, not profit. We got 13 more minutes with the people. Mm -hmm. We gonna go real rapid fire, real quick with each yeah. other. You ready? Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. coming at you like this. I'm that same energy because you usually kick it to me first. Oh yeah, I'm coming. At, I'm coming. I'm coming. You know, okay. <laughs> so off the break, worst first date option: Chris Shaw and Rock. Or what's the fucking girl that just did the interview with Joe Buttons? Candace Owens. Candace Owens. What you said worst. Option. Yeah, worst first date option. I'm definitely right. going with Candace Owens. I'm just making sure. I can change her. Because we all have political stance. I'm trying to go street and political. I can already tell, and then, I don't give a fuck if she sees this. I'm the type of person. If I was single, I could change her whole mindset. Because some of the shit she say right, and then some of the shit she says. Candace Owens whole yeah. mindset. Yeah, she just ain't never had no real nigga. That's you wouldn't talk. You wouldn't take Krishan on the first date. Fuck no. <laughs> I'm not taking no bitch on the first date. They got a nigga tatted on their face. That's insane. Oh, that is that is insane. We think about it. We say it like that. That's that is quite insane. We say it like that. Hey, my first rapid fire for you is LeBron just hit forty thousand points. Congrats, Bam! congrats to the goat, the king. What is your favorite LeBron, LeBron moment from the NBA? Oh, I mean, any moment. I'm not gonna limit it. My favorite LeBron James moment from the NBA will have to be, if I'm going to just be, this going to sound cliche as shit because it's the first thing that came to my mind, man. Cleveland, this is for you. Like, everybody shitted on my man from going to Miami. Everybody tried to, like, he was the first KD. He didn't go join the Golden State Warriors, but join in D-Wade, even though they joined him to beat Boston, who had a big four. Um, so I just say shout out to Bronny um, for that, man. Doing it for Cleveland, went back home. After the owner disrespected him, he put his pride to the side, did it for his city. That's the most honorable shit a sports person can do. I, I'm not going to give you an answer because uh, I don't think I have to really think about it, but I can say what I'm looking forward to in his career is Sam play with his son. That's what I, the one thing he hasn't done yet that I just, I don't give a fuck if it's one game, bro. Uh, against his son on the same team, that's going to be epic. Well, since you mentioned son, and since we talked about the king, yeah. I'm going to give you the same type of question. Favorite Nas song? Favorite Nas song? Yeah, and I know that. You see me. I don't know if you even noticed it tonight when I went to the Nas and Wu-Tang show just not too long ago. Um, favorite Esco? I know it's your favorite rapper. Favorite Nas song? Uh, Put the pressure cooker on. I'm going to just say Made You Look, bro, because there's okay. something about that beat, and I remember at that time that video, but I mean... It's so many. It's not my all-time favorite. That's no, just a classic. That way that bitch come on. That's one of the hardest hip-hop songs ever. I put that in my top 50 hip-hop songs ever. Okay. Um, so my next question, let me see. And it's real freestyle rapid fire, y'all. We didn't write this down. Yeah. Worst movie that you've seen in the last five years? Um, since I watched it today, um, The Royal Egypt or something, I love Gerard Butler. If y'all don't know, that's the main actor in 300. He also got a movie called P.S. I Love You with Hilary Swank. Great rom-com. Some of my favorite movies. Bro, it's a movie in Egypt with all white people and the only black person in it. I guarantee you they had to wipe this off this man IMDb. We never knew it. Chadwick Boseman. Mm -hmm. Bro, when I seen him in it, he's wisdom. So it's like, he actually has a prominent role and he's actually like one of the dopest things about the movie. But when I say that movie's trash, bro, trash. And Gerard, you my guy, bro. I watched like five of your movies in the last few nights because I was chilling in the house with Donovan. Cool. <laughs> Not a great movie. That had to be horrible. Yeah. So, since you asked me that, I'm just piggybacking off you. So off what you just asked me, I'm going to keep on staying on that point. What's the best thing about the Bob Marley movie? I know you just watched it. I know you said it was a great watch. Yes. So I mean, it was a lot of, I, 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 it's not one thing. I think that I've always just had this assumption of why people like Bob Marley. Part of that being weed, which right. is crazy. Because, you know, a lot of us associate Bob Marley with smoking. The ganja. But bro was so, like, in love with his culture and reggae. Like, and his songs. That's another thing I underestimated. I don't know if it's... Just the thing about hearing music and seeing a movie behind it, they right. make it better. But just seeing some of his classics being played in that movie and the love he had for his family, man, it's a great watch. Ever since the pandemic, I've been real like iffy about going to the movies. It's not many movies that release in the theaters anymore. A lot of them going straight digital. So definitely worth going to the theaters and a good movie. I give it five stars. I got a quick question on that. Oh, so, okay. I'm going to throw something in there. Out of the top five uh, biopics, I guess you would call them, uh -huh. the top five black biopics was he, you think that movie was in the top five of biopics? Oh, for sure. Good question. So he's up there with, uh, 
What's Love Got to Do With It? He's up there with, uh, so this is going to be a classic. Yeah, because uh, okay. the one thing I love was uh, What's Love Got to Do With It? That's Frankie Lambo, right? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you oh, you're talking about that one. Um, that's um, that's um, about Water about Food's Fall Out. Yeah, Water Food. I, but Tina Turner is um, yes. What's Love Got to Do Okay. Now, see, the one thing I don't like about either one of those is I felt like those movies are no more about like the negative shit in it. How Tina Turner got hit, right. and then Frankie Lyman having three women. Like it's a much more negative ending to it. This shit was powerful, bro. Like gotcha. well, Tina Turner shit was more. You might go. You might want to go rewatch that. Yeah, Frankie, yeah. Frankie Lyman shit. I'm with you on. I'm that was about I'm, drama. I'm gonna yeah. say. I'm gonna say with them too. What you just saying? Wrong. It has drama in it, but you know, as a, a people, sometimes <laughs> we take out the that part. And it's a whole mess about that lady. Yeah, that's the that lady. Yeah, that that but sometimes that's because we can all relate to it. We all don't have an auntie that got her tail beat by somebody. Yeah. We all don't have an uncle that got several girlfriends and bring them all to the same family. Yeah. It's the same situation. But you know, it's a so that's good because I was wondering. I was like, I should go check it out. Um, but I love a good biopic. The one, uh, and I don't want to give it away, but it's such a good part that I think a lot of people might want to go see it just because I never knew that Bob Marley and his wife got shot in the same day. Like, wow. never. Oh, did. I'm telling you, I seen that part. It, it was like wow. Like, and it wasn't for any particular reason. It was kind of just beefing in Jamaica. It was a huge civil war going on. And uh, yeah, see the outcome of what happened when him and his wife got shot. But like, Bob Marley went through a lot and still wanted to create peace for the people. So it's definitely worth the watch. That. Okay. My next rapid fire action, roll one down for this one. Favorite TV show? Mm. I'm, yeah, I, this might be wrong. I can just keep How this wrong is yours? Because it's a rapid fire answer and it's the right. first that popped in my head. It's, it's not, not really true for Family matters. I don't know why I love <laughs> You're the first person that ever in my life said that. Show, that shit yeah, no, Family Matters is great. I've never heard nobody say that answer. Yeah, that shit was You talking about the old Family Matters? Yeah, yeah. I've never heard nobody say that was the best oh. ever. Like, I've heard people say it's a great black that's family said, show. That's why I said, it, I knew I it. I love the answer, so thank you. But it yeah. was dope as fuck. I never that's saw that episode. I connected with it a lot. Steve being the underdog, but still always fighting for the love. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like the answer because it was the same. And I fuck with Steve Urkel because they, his fucking family act like they hated that motherfucker. He always showed love and still showed up, showed out. Whether he embarrassed the hell out of Carl or tricked the shit out of Eddie. And they, I mean, but they still show love to him. Yo, Steve is just an icon, bro. And now that he's selling weed, shout out to Jaleel White. Oh, he's selling weed now? Yeah, he got purple urkel. Like, yes. Smart. He's weed. Okay, he's Brandon. Purple. Brandon. Jaleel. That's the flavor, bro. Check my guy out. He got weed t-shirts with his old character on it with the red eyes. Like, he really took, I guess he looked at it this way. These niggas gonna call me Steve Urkel my whole life. Now I'm gonna show you niggas how to get the bag off. So go yeah. cop that purple Urkel. That's a hidden gem for all you uh, childhood TV stars and rap stars. Listen, man, you better make that image work for you forever. It's the same thing with what Terrell just said about college. Uh, what's the show? A different Rift world. world. Yeah. They know all of them same. characters are known for that more than. And it's crazy because Kadeem Harris, right? That's the man. Hard, hardest Hard, yes. Hardison. Mm -hmm. He got great movies. That nigga funny as a bitch, but I think a lot of people, if you had 10 people in a room, nine of them will say they remember. The way way? Yeah. But I got more, a little bit of history about that. Okay. Do you know who his mother is? Who? She is a fashion icon. I never knew that. She has a show on Netflix, her documentary, and okay. Kadeem is on there. Wow. She was a single mother and raised him as being a runaway model all over Paris and everywhere. She is a uh, philanthropist, and she's also... Um, she stood up. She signed, uh, what's his name? What's the black model? Um, you know, yeah. Ralph Lauren, oh. strong. You know. You talking about, she's a boomerang? It's a guy. It's a guy I was talking about? Yes. Oh. He's <laughs> a male model. He, we all, it was only one male model. Hold on, male model in what? Tyson Beckford? Tyson Beckford. Uh, she's, she's like signed Tyson Beckford. Okay, okay. So she, she worked with Naomi Campbell. She gotcha, worked with all of gotcha, them. Gotcha, so gotcha. she was a person fighting for equality okay. in um, the model industry because they took all the black people off of modeling and just mm -hmm. replaced them with other folks. Um, so not knowing that, I'm watching this whole documentary. And then looking and her son pops up and it's him. I'm like, what? That's where you came from? Right. Nice. Much respect for that. You got to so, check it out. Hidden Jim question based off of that. Mm -hmm. Favorite Kadeem Hardison movie? 
My favorite Kadeem artist in movie, I gotta go with the first one to come to my head, man. Vampire Brooklyn. Okay, yeah. That's oh, my yeah. that's <laughs> one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite man. I know I love vampires and shit. Um so he's not the only one that likes funerals. Oh, yeah. Um but uh yeah, no, listen, there's a new vampire in Brooklyn and his name is Julius. I can watch that movie. Bruh, every time it come on, listen, it's that. three movies, I'm watching every time it come on. I don't care what else is happening. Loving basketball, vampire in Brooklyn, and, and Titanic. Life. I'm like, watching Titanic, Titanic start to finish Titanic. every time Bro, I come I can't do I love Leonardo DiCaprio. But it's it's, two, it's, it's three acts. Oh, that joint's so good. I could, it, it, I could, I remember that. If I watched him win the card game, I'm not walking away unless I got something to fucking do. <laughs> and if, if I get that yeah. win into it, I'm not moving away. Yeah. Oh, unless I got something to do, I ain't gonna sacrifice the bag or shit with it. But I love Titanic. Like, I don't even know if it's my favorite Leonardo movie, but that's a great film because it's, it's crazy. Because that's the first thing that made me think. Well, maybe I can ask a question. We just talked about people that get remembered for, you know, pretty much one thing regardless of what they do next. Most memorable Denzel Washington film, because he had so many. John Q. Why? Because it, it was the one thing that I could relate to that I think I would do. If my son fucking couldn't get a kidney and it's so simple, yeah. but you know, the hospital got all the Right, right, right. Pay. More funerals. Yeah. You patty. That's my nigga. That's my guy, man. You know, we just gotta stay on our cue. John. Hey, no, that is a classic. That wasn't. You know my favorite Denzel movie? Now we just all over Ricochet. I ain't never seen that. Old school Denzel. One of his first ones. Um, nah, this is when he was a DA. He ended up busting a fucking like Klansman dude. This guy ended up being in several other movies. The only one I can think of him right now is he's the father in the first um, Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. And he's like starting to have dementia or something. James Franco, if you ain't seen it, fuck it. But uh, yeah, that's my shit right there. Ricochet, he ended up getting set up. Nigga gave him herpes, almost lost family and all that. Ice tea in it. Go back and watch Ricochet if you've never seen it. One of my favorite Denzel people. And shout out to my brother, Almost Home, Jones. He made me think of Denzel because he said, think about this. He said, all Denzel does is play public servants. Mm. Think about it. I died laughing one day when I thought about it. Like, damn. Shit, the nigga locked up and think about it deep. No, he said it for Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, Jones. That sounds like a jail. Man. It does sound like something like this. My favorite say. Denzel movie is American Gangster. I'm sorry. Oh, right. I think it's classic. Damn. That's classic. That's my you know favorite. What? It's classic. Man. I take that. He got a, a man. He got a black guy. But, but yeah. I, did you say favorite or you said most memorable? Yeah, most memorable for you because memorable, favorite, whatever power. He has so many. The reason I thought of that because what will people remember Denzel Washington for? And like many you, things. Nobody in the right, same right. scenario. Nine, nine people gonna have different answers. That's yeah. love. That's yeah. a hell of a career. Yeah. No disrespect to the different world cast, but when you can make your career that. That's like, well, we're not all shooting for that. I love doing for the love podcast, but I hope I can hit other, you know, stratospheres. Mm -hmm. I hope you can continue to grow. I know you would love to do the biggest fucking mural in the world. Like, you ain't stopping. Mm -hmm. I know you want to keep on producing and be on a fucking runway and dressing somebody up doing something major. Oh. Like, so yeah, you. I don't know if y'all watch the Joe Buttons podcast, but if y'all liking tonight's vibe and feeling, because I like the flow of it, let us know in the comments when this come out, because this is like our parks. If you watch the Joe Buttons podcast, they got parked on camera now. But for like the first... I think you just said episode 700. First 500 episodes, you never saw Parks, bro. <laughs> Parks would just be off to the side, on the computer, doing his thing. And then, after they started to shift, they brought on Ice, brought on everybody else. Yeah. Um, Melissa Ford, uh, what's my man from Queens? Queens Flip. Um, now they got it more so like Parks is a part of the show. So I just think that's dope. So if y'all feeling, I didn't even say his name until he wanted. No face to tell you there. Uh, <laughs> Not Let us know when this come out because we like the energy of this and he's giving us gems and stuff that we didn't know. Yeah. So, you know, it adds another element to the rapid fire and all sure. that. So, um, any more rapid fire? So I, mean, I just want to okay. tail into what you said about Denzel and then you mentioned Klansman. Shout out to his son who a lot of people don't know about. Mm. Started Black Klansman. David. Oh, God, bro. That he's a great actor. Hilarious, bro. And I think when you have, we talk about brothers in football, when you have a father and a son you know, narrative. It's really hard to live up to an acting. I love that when I see him on camera. There's a lot of them though. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of father sons. I was especially say, the one thing Caucasian that I noticed about well, like, so look, the one thing I so noticed. Of us. Mm -hmm. But enough. The one thing I noticed <laughs> about Hollywood when it comes to relatives, and this may be more so in the white culture of Hollywood. What's that? If they have a family member that's way up there, a lot of them scared to live up to that. They gonna change their names, bro. That's true. 
That is true. Perfect example, Emilio Estevez. Did you know that? I did. Yeah. Charlie Sheen and all that's his brother. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't be called right? Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen changed his name because Estevez is the real name. I think. I think yeah. so. Charlie Sorry, changed his but name. But them brothers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they follow was um I think was it Martin Sheen? Yeah. Is it yeah. Martin, Martin Sheen? Yeah, you correct. That's yes. It. So that's right, right. Emilio and but to Emilio me, changed his name. Dude. But this, see, that's the thing I wanted to say. You got to give respect to people like Denzel, son, who kept the last name, yeah. and any. It's like balls. Wayans, all of them. Man. You don't look at any of the Wayans and see the same person. They all have their own little niche. So it's a it's it takes a lot to live up to your family name. The strongest Even family in Hollywood. And their sister too. Like Kim. Oh, the strongest right. family, I think I think they have to be since we've been growing in rankings. Is it a stronger family in Hollywood? No. I don't think so. You don't think the you don't think the strongest family? No, I, I do. I was asking y'all. There's so many of them. There's so many of them. saying, dude, was there any other? Yeah, thing? like, do you think there's anybody that even challenges them? Who the Wayans? Yeah. And we're not talking like the Jacksons and shit. That's music. Are we talking about acting? Acting. acting. Gotta be acting. The strongest family, family I would Gotta say. Gotta be acting family. It would have to be the Wayans. Yeah, it has exactly. to be. It's got to be just number. Is it? We we talking numbers, like because if they got kids, that yeah. have too. Like you can't forget. Hell them. yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they get close. Yeah. You made me forget about all the yeah. babies. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, killing yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, shout out to the Wayne. They got family. writers. They got directors. They got people that you don't even know was doing work on the show. So yeah, shout out to the Wayne family. Yeah. Shout out to the pioneer Keenan and Ivory. Yeah, living yeah. color, classic. You would never be. How many one. people be? Why you finding the next topic? How many people knew that? The Wayans and In Living Color was the reason that we have Super Bowl halftime shows. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes. They, so uh, the year before Michael Jackson did the Super Bowl, now I'm not saying that it wasn't halftime shows, but they weren't like the go-to to watch. Right. Until In Living Color did a, they, they thought of the idea to do a special the same time that the NFL halftime was going on. And a lot of viewers at that time switched channels and went to watch and live in color while they had time. Genius. The next year, the NFL went and got Michael Jackson. And what you see today with Usher, that's mm -hmm. the birth of that. So mm -hmm. shout out to the uh, Living Color and the Wayans family for creating history. Black yeah. creatives, once again. Yeah. Always. They for the win. win. Yeah. So two things that we got to spend the block on. Yes, for all of our first time listeners, we so damn comfortable tonight. I forgot yeah. we were shooting. Sure. I forgot they was looking at us. They listening to us. <laughs> Do it for the love episode 18 for the love of freestyle if anybody just tapped in with us. So we are now at the spin the block segment. So we're gonna spin the block on a whole segment and we're gonna spin the block on something that I think we both can uh, speak to in a high regard and I'll do that second. So the first thing we're gonna spin the block on, love and I love. Yeah. This episode has been very strong in a sense of opinions. Mm -hmm. So we gotta bring y'all back into a little bit more fun stuff, but also some serious stuff. But we talk about things that we don't prefer, things that we don't choose, yeah. things that just ain't for us. Want me to kick it off? You got it. You got it this time. So love to not love first with me. Scroll up here. You know it's deep when you got to type it in the computer. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with a lighter one. I wrote down four tonight. Oh. My love to not love is when people can't have real conversations about the past or future due to lack of accountability. Mm. I cannot stand when a person just wants to pivot or maneuver around things because for them to have that conversation, they have to look you in your eyes and realize that they was fucked up. Mm -hmm. And they fucked up. Yeah. And I can forgive you. But you cannot forgive yourself. So you got to keep on finding reasons to be like, oh, there you go. Oh, man, I ain't here with this shit. I'm out. Or avoid the whole conversation. Or avoid you. Yeah. So that's my very quick love to not love. Have a kind of My first love to not love is people who fucking go out of their way to take time to prey on the bad shit of others. Like, they just mm -hmm. preying on your downfall. Mm -hmm. The fact that you brought God, to, brought God into this to <laughs> ask him to that. bestow bad shit on another human being is crazy. I don't give a fuck how much a person you hate. Like, I don't prey on the downfall of others. I feel like anybody that take their time out to even drop to their knees and do that shit, you only call it, you create something on yourself. I think whatever you're asking for, God gonna bring to you. Right. I think Spitfire's on fire tonight. That man just said the H-A-T-E word out loud. He's on fire. He's on it all tonight. So, you he's know, relax. Relax because you cut your smoke. God, I missed that. I'm going to stick so I got you, my brother. That's why I'm here. My second one, since I already brought it up, and since we obviously in the mood to talk politics, election time. I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. That's how much I love the not love the shit. It's like gaslighting season. 
Y'all just sit out here and run your propaganda and you have a whole bunch of people pointing fingers and going at each other just for y'all to do the same shit in the same cycle again and again and again and again. So I didn't even gotta go deep into it. I wrote some other stuff down, but I said enough when I spoke on politics earlier. Can y'all just, you know, be real, change the fucking system, go talk to Adam Silver, figure out a different way to do the All-Star Game selection, and come up with one fucking party. I still don't believe this shit probably, but at least I can act, y'all can act like it's one guided direction instead of acting like y'all don't rock with each other, just to go on Bill Maher and talk to it about it with each other's teams, and then go back to the camps in D.C. and do the same shit. Yeah. You know, just stop, <clears throat> please. My last love tonight, love Donald Trump, bro. The Trump ones, you know what? That's exactly why I bring him in because whoever he allowed to convince him that coming out with a gold pair of shoes that he mimicked from, man, they look like the old Adidas. You know, the blacks love the sneakers. Yeah. They love the sneakers. The fact that he had the balls to do that, bro, I love to not love that motherfucker. It's like the same way how he think we love sneakers <laughs> so much, he forgot that it's a, culture, a part of our culture where we bootleg. So a lot of people then went, and I think it's probably more white people than black, they bought up his shoes just to resell them back online for triple the amount. You see your boy? Who? Fat Joe? Nah. He, he got them? Yeah, he got oh, wow. He said he didn't buy them. But he was like, I'm a collector. I, I gotta have the Trump ones. He put them on the table and was like... Matter of fact, let me switch. My love to not love is Fat Joe. Don't do that to Joe. <laughs> Tell him something, Joe. He, he, Don't do that to he Joe. Vibes, he's one of the most, I love Joe. He's one of the most contradicting men in the hip-hop business, bro. Yeah. He but always, he played the game. Nah, Look at what we're talking about tonight, right? Nah, this is my first time I am going to defend. I love so we gotta have a fucking new button. We gotta have a button. The freestyle show is different. You know what I challenge your love and I love? And this is why. We had the conversation, you said it several times. I know you really don't like the shit. The, the, the young thug shit, acting like you're not Don Carter Jr. We know Fat Joe, right, that nigga. We know he's in the streets. Yeah, we know he's in the streets. But if they can fucking lie about our history their whole fucking life, like, you know, I want to spin the block on this thought. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even spin the block on this, but it made me think about it. You know why, like, how people change their name? Or why black people are quick to argue something and not argue the voting shit? Because we see what that do for us in America. Mm -hmm. Nothing. We never win when we challenge the system. What it takes, cream, they can say all of the billionaire blacks to get together right now. Guess what? It's more billionaire whites. If they as wild as we believe they are the way we speak about people, they will keep us in position. So I ain't saying that's a reason to stay put because I'm too much of a believer of Kanye to not say don't challenge the system. Stand on what you stand on. Die about it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like that just made me spin the block on that whole thought because it's like... That's why I picked that as my love to not love. So to go back to Joe, I ain't gonna get mad at him for being like, Young Thug stands for thunderous, hungry, united, grown people. Like, you know what? They fucking around that face all the time. And I ain't saying Young Thug line. That's what it stands for. <laughs> if motherfucking DA watch my tape. <laughs> but for real though, it's like, I get why you feel that way about it, but at the same time, it's like, man, they gaslight and do so much propaganda and bullface lying. Is that like, yeah, why can't we do it sometimes and shit? It's the same way we thought when the dude roasted Charlemagne earlier. Like, all right, you're right, I'm not the typical black dude. And I probably do give off white vibes. But when that white man sat in front of you and talking about black ain't this and you don't do that, you ain't say shit. So don't call me on what black is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love where that term. We're going to do the bus on it. You're a shoe collector, right? Well, you want to go and buy the KKK? Fuck no. Puma shoes just because you're a collector? Fuck no. But I would have got that Confederate flag easy jacket if I could have bought that bitch. Because I understood his messaging. Oh, when Kanye yeah. put that red hat on, the message wasn't that, even though he do fuck with some of Trump ways, the same way I think most niggas fuck with Trump, because he's the first president that act like how we all feel about politics. And nigga said, fuck the whole system. I'm glad but, you ain't buying that motherfucking jacket. No, nah, if I could have got my hands on him, that bitch was hard. That buddy would have wore that shit somewhere the wrong place, get punched in the back of his head somewhere, oh, because he wore some Trump shit. No, it wasn't Trump. That was that was that was, that was the Jesus era. That was Kanye. That was the Jesus shit. This is way before Trump. This 2013 yet. That's why I say when people pay attention to Kanye's wildness when they want, he's always been on one. He's always challenging. From the moment he joined the the moment he joined the record label, where everybody won't wear throwbacks, he said, you know what, tight jeans and pink polos. He's always something to do everything you niggas ain't doing. He always is the end. I can respect him for that. He's been, I think that's me. And it's consistent. That that's why I love him. That's why I love certain people. That's why I love to not love like Donald Trump. Man, I don't fuck with that, man. But at the same time, I believe him more than I believe any other politician besides Barack Obama. 
Well, can I can I can I say something? You more so I kid. don't bank. I don't bank that, and y'all can y'all don't know who I, what I look like, so I don't care. But <laughs> he said the wrong thing, y'all. Y'all see his face. I don't bank that Trump is prejudiced. I don't either. The reason being is because you have to go on people's history. That man was on uh, Fresh Prince, a Bel Air. Why are you on Fresh Prince? He was connected with all rappers. He connected with money, parties, loving this, loving this back in the day. Now that he's was president or whatever he was doing, now everybody say he prejudiced. He's not. He's just divisive. It's, that's what people don't like. He's divisive. He, when you go from Obama to him, he made people not like people. Yeah, that's why people don't like him. Yes. So that's why I say I'm raising a uh, person that's a me- that has a mental uh, disability disorder. Man, this man will mimic. If you a handicapped person, you say something about me, bitch, all gloves is off. I'm at the handicapped community. If you're a black and you say something about me, I'm at the black community. Trump is at whoever at him. That's how I take him. Yeah. He's literally. I, I can re- but I can respect that. I though, do respect that. That's why I agree with it's you. It's just across the board. Like if he gonna talk about somebody handicapped, somebody old, somebody um, talking about old Joe and all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the laugh, but it's, it's consistent. So I, I just look at him as being who he is. And I don't. The reason why I say I can, I can like, I don't dislike him is because we all feel like all of these presidents have lied to us, but they smile on our face and act like they got our back. They so, just a represent. They just a, They're just the representation of what's going on with their party at that time. They technically don't got no power. Right. And this they is gotta not, go to everybody else and be like, oh, can we do this over here? Can we give them a million dollars? Can we do this? It's not him right. doing it. So we gotta look at it like he's not in control. The parties are in control. Right. And the houses is telling him, you can do this. We just had to have a PSA because I know some of y'all been watching like, did these niggas just endorse Donald Trump? We did not, not just we endorse did not. Donald Trump. We what we're not. saying is that everything needs to be challenged. And if you're a liar, if you said this man ain't challenged the political system, the whole, I watch everybody say, no way he gets out of the Republican Party. No way he makes it past this part. No way. This man say, yeah, fuck you, Rubio. Fuck this motherfucker. Fuck, yeah. Ain't got some dumb motherfuckers do soon as he went. Fuck the Democratic Party. Trump's our guy. Yeah. So how can y'all not really see what's going on when you see him say, fuck everybody. That who's the real clown? Like, who's really ill? Yeah. We just it's just watched, crazy. Man, I still can't get over We watched a man tell thousands of people to walk into the Capitol building. <laughs> In Bro. his own language and destroy that motherfucker. Yeah. And he's still free. He got like he's a billion dollars in court fines right now, bro. Imagine if Louis Farrakhan did that for one of the million man marches where all he just said was whatever and y'all should do whatever to this building that y'all think they've yeah. been doing to us for years. Sorry, we know they put that nigga in cuss so quick. Yeah. So, you know, I just, and that's the, double the standard. fact that he was able to get away with so many blatant things, I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to the point of him. I don't think he's racist. I think he's straightforward. Mm-hmm. I think he may have prejudiced views on certain shit, but who doesn't? My yeah. Friend. We Let's all do. Talk to him. To be honest with talk you. To him. And so, again, I respect the truth more than I do a lie. If I'm, if I would rather have a neighbor that would say, I don't fuck with you niggas, leave me alone, don't bother yeah. me. Yeah. Then the neighbor would be like, hey buddy. The whole time he see us cook out and plan a party, he the first nigga calling the call- cops on us. Mm-hmm. And we don't know where the call coming from. Yes. I'd rather know my fucking neighbor don't fuck with us. And that's where the call coming from. And now we know what the fuck, how we need curry going forward. And that's so. what our public don't like. Our public don't like blatant honesty and make people feel unnerved. And that's why a lot of people don't like a Trump or a Kanye. I ain't saying everything they say is peaceful. They say right. a lot of shit that's going to change you to either look in the mirror or go do some research and whether you want to do it or not it's really up to you but you can't act like some of the shit ain't valid that's what i'm saying we can't i spoke on accountability earlier it goes all around the board we can't just do it with positive stuff only we gotta look at everything so my other thing i want to spend the block on before we almost close it up it is women's history month Mm -hmm. and i just wanted to show big big love to women as a whole um, I love the women in my life, uh, the mother of my child, my mother, my sister, all of the women that I've dated, the women that I see now, um, everybody. Like, I ain't even got to throw no names out there. I'm just saying my love for women. Um, they're the creators. To me, they are the bright minds that push men to greatness. I think um, without women, what are we? Who are we? Where are we? Without women. So, being that, uh, what are we, day five in the March? Um, I just want to say, Big, big love to all the women. I love you all. Shine always. You ain't limited to just a month, but uh, from me to you. 
You know, I do it for y'all. Hearing you say that, you know, I just had a flash of different women popping in my head because you eloquently said that, like Michelle Obama's, all the good women so in the community. So you know, the Bertina next, the legends. Right. I can't stand these new bitches though. <laughs> this new generation of women, they do not deserve to get talked about. And that's all I say. It's Women's History Month, and I've already seen so much ratchet shit from women on social media. It's like, think about the women who really paved the way and did the things that we needed done for this country. And Shout out like, to them too. No, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> yo. Shout out to the ones that go spaceships and shit too, because you're a human cow. It's crazy. How many people you know, women, black women you know, especially young men, even mention Women's History Month? Not many. I haven't really seen. I mean, if you, or maybe on social media, wait till Mother's Day. Wait till Mother's Day come, bro. You you, you feel me? You already know. It's not even enough attention on Women's History Month for it to be validated. Well, y'all doing that because now they're going to be, our mother's going to be like, you know it's Mother's History Month. I mean, not Women's History Month. No, a mother can turn it into Mother's History Month. I'm a woman, that's a mother. It's Mother's History Month. And you're going to be like, what? Sometimes you gotta say negative shit to wake them up. This Listen, is almost, just like how so we, on y'all count. Just like how we, we ain't supposed to be acting dumb in February. You, I just seen plenty of people like this been a crazy ass bad history. It's been a crazy ass. ass and they gave y'all a full month. And, they got and they there's Women's month. History Month, and we got Krishan Rocks. And well, I'm gonna take that and pivot too. <laughs> this is not episode 18 for the love of freestyling. So before I play on the word. What you got? And you brought her up earlier. Carter. I just want to say special shout out to Janae Weary. Oh, okay. You know who that is? No. Big Sexy, nigga, that's her real name. Okay. Janae Weary, you uh, had the girls twerking at the White House. He just said he didn't want to shout out the new one. So I'm holding you at a high light, baby. It is Woman History Month. You making history like a motherfucker. Oh, wow. So my second thing, just a quick thought. We're getting towards the end of my show. Before we say anything inspirational, freestyle style, or whatever, a few more trending topics. It's episode 18 for the love of freestyle. Mm -hmm. Cardi B new set of freestyle. Okay. Video out, directed by Offset. Have you seen it ever this? I watched it on mute. That look good. She look good. You don't like Cardi? Huh? You don't like Cardi music? That was shady. Saying, I'm just saying I watched it on mute. Oh, you ain't had a chance to listen to yeah, it. Yeah. So oh, I, just, oh, I thought that was being shady. I, I did saying, too. I was with the yeah. hangers, everything up. No, I, like love, that. I, love, I love Cardi. Like, Big dog. And she a Libra, so. I was just saying, I happened to watch it on mute, and I didn't need to turn on the sound. Right. Uh, she well, looked good. Like, I'm I've a, always been she looked good. Yeah. I'll give a more of a musical um, answer to that. Um, I love the Missy flip, because if I'm not mistaken, it's that brum, 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 brum. I forgot the name of the Missy song, but I actually, from off my first few listens, I think I prefer Bia's version. Okay. A little bit more Bia's a talented, dope-ass rap artist, but she's still, okay. she's not on like the, I don't think she's on the Cardi Nicki levels in the sense of popularity yet, but she didn't drop hits. Consistently with, for like with, the last with Nikki. Years. I think she had a song with Nikki. She had the song with Nikki. She yeah. got the joint with J. Cole. She got the uh the joint where she on the joint with um, I think um YG and J. Cole, a whole nother song. But she got the other joint, um, Chilling in London, something, you know, I ain't gonna get into it. I try to rap like her because I try to rap like girls when I sing these songs. But uh yeah, man, I just Makes wanna say the Cardi joint is strong. I think uh, like also said, stop being scared, buddy. You had a hit first album, what was that, maybe four years ago? Mm -hmm. It's time. It's time. Like, live up to I think everybody trying, think you are. I think she's trying live up to hold back her go. album. I think because she's in the studio working on her album. One thing about Cardi is, and I'm not taking anything from the other young lady, right. but to me, the way she's coming, it was like when Kim came out with the fashions, that's the catchy. They they doing the right thing with her to make her give this, this fashion person. Then listen to the music because it's catchy, you know, it's a whole package. Um, I think that she might be kind of nervous to put her new project out just because it's getting so much hype and it has to live up to the first Grammy. What she got? Five Grammys? Four Grammys? She, the first, that first album, she fucking probably won everything she's nominated for. Cause, Cause she actually, um... And then a year after the Bruno Mars song probably won some shit. Yeah, cause she took, she took best rap album and that's never happened with a female in that category. Cause it used to just be, I think, if I'm not mistaken, allegedly, uh, it was all women's rap um, category. I think she beat the men out that year um, for the best album. So that's big for her. Um, but I think that she's just holding back and just, you know, because other people trying to eat her up when, you know, when she drops it and stuff. So Before we yeah. close out, definitely got to shout out Beyonce. We talking about Women's History Month. Beyonce continue to move the needle of ticket sales, streaming. Number one song that. in the country. And I had to mention that because Beyonce could just play her lane that she always been in, stay television and Conquer and 
and build and do, continue to do what she's doing, but she's taking the chance to almost hit the reset button, jumping into a new genre of music. Mm -hmm. Not a nigga wanting to get out here and buy a fucking cowboy hat. This ain't Texas. And I'm, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of Beyonce, but I love seeing people not humble like she's not going. I just love to see her like this, have this challenge because when I even see her presence in this new version of herself, it comes with a bit of, is this going to work behind it? And I love that she's taking that shit head on and, uh, Shout out to Beyonce. Yeah, she's on down with country songs before, obviously being from Texas is something that she probably always held close to her heart. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be fire. I love that the Renaissance whole thing is a three-part act. I heard rumors that the last act is the album with Jay-Z, another one. Um, so yeah, I think that I love the I love same thing I said about Kanye, same thing we said about Trump. Y'all might not like them two people in a sentence with your queen, uh, but it's the truth. I love people that just challenge the status quo. Don't be fucking jailed to nothing. No one genre. If you're creative enough and you put in the work like Beyonce has, obviously, she done put in enough R&B work, pop dance work, that she can make any type of music she want. And she's a great artist, so it's going to be good regardless. Um, and yeah, I look forward to the album. I look forward to what she's going to do. I see she made Joe Buttons. He was, yeah, you know Joe. Joe always apologizing because he always has strong takes. Yeah. And one thing I respect is that he'll get on camera and apologize when the strong take is wrong. Because he shitted on a Beyonce song. And then he bounced back and was like, man, I had to come back, y'all. And the nigga was like, the same to Texas. And he was like, that bitch fine. So it's a great song. And a lot of people are not talking about the ballad. The ballad is just as fire as the, you know, the line dance TikTok song. I've, but yeah. I've learned in music. You can't just, some songs you can't take off face value, meaning the first time you hear it, give it your critique. Right. But I honestly think you have to go through the three part of it. It's listening to it, then watching the video, like the music video, and then seeing it in a movie or commercial. Mm -hmm. Wow. Or some radio club, somewhere where everybody because else reacts to it. It's a whole new respect for the song, right. like just music in general. Right. Like, that's why songs like Air Force One, that may not be the best lyrical song, but from a branding standpoint and setting the tone and being used forever. Like that's one one of the many songs that gotcha. I the first one popped in my head. But music is uh music is tricky, man. There's been plenty of songs that I've hated before and then and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bleep that out, but you and it was the past. Look, it's the past, so I guess I hated it before, but gotcha. Uh, it's, it's just different now. It's freestyling tonight, like, y'all. Don't throw yeah. source. Nah, it's, I, I really do take a different listen with music now, and I try to hear it multiple times before I get my full critique on it. Well, I love how we didn't pivot all of that, but that was all about Women's History Month. Yeah. And uh, shout out to all of y'all. For those who care, I'm in the Beehive, I'm with the uh, Barbs. And um, I'm waiting for the lady to come back. And if you can see the look that uh, No Face Italian has given me, someone's Barty gang in the building. But you know, it is what it is. Rock with your set, rock with your vibe. I'm sharing for all the women because of women's history. What's sexy where your crew vote? The, the buddies. Oh, okay. I don't know if anybody loves the way I do. Ain't nobody out here. Brave dogs. What they call? <laughs> the groundhogs. Y'all gonna stop. Y'all gonna stop, man. Big sexy, man. Shout out to Big Sexy, man. Yeah. So, moving forward. That was pretty much spin the block. We show love. We did do the uh, love tonight, love. At this point, um, is there anything else trending, or is it time for us to give the people a message, a moment, and um, you know, yeah, get on out of here? Wow, man, the flow been good. You know what I mean? Especially Definitely been sleeping for a minute. This might be our longest episode ever. Yeah, We've been flowing. Right? Close Feel like we at home. But I will say, uh, just to close it out on the love of freestyle, and um, this may be one of our best episodes. You know, just from, you know, the energy and right. not really having to focus on another person's career. Just really having fun free. with the show, being free, giving y'all an update of how we feel about our progress, talking about some of these trending topics, which we be wanting to talk about a lot. But because we have a guest, we strictly focus on them. So it feel good to be back in a space where we can just freely talk, you know. We're not sensitive to where this conversation could go or Thanks. not go. So it's been dope, man. Freestyling, can, like I said, it could be a pleasure. It's nerve-wracking at the beginning because you don't know what you're going to do. That's the main definition of it, being free and not knowing how it's going to be styled. And now we're here to show you guys that it can be done well, and especially, and this was our improv episode right here. Yeah, man. Do it for the love. You know, special, special shout out. Atelier Baltimore, our studio. Special, special shout out to our Shine the Spotlight recipient. DTLR, you know it's your fashion, your lifestyle. If you do it for the love, then you're gonna always be authentic in who you are. Special, special shout out as Self said earlier in the show. All our likers, all our lovers, 
all you subscribers. Please keep on subscribing. Please start commenting more, interacting more. We're going to keep on trying to find ways to get y'all involved with us because that is our job and our duty. But we are nothing without you. Like Little Wayne always say, I got three things I say in any show. First, I ain't shit without you. Mm -hmm. Second most important thing is even more important than the first one is I ain't shit without you. Mm -hmm. And I ain't going to get into the third one because we doing it for the love. Right? Sure. Episode 18 for the love of freestyle. We out.